What is up guys? Welcome to a brand new video. Today we're going to be playing Tristana. Now I love Tristana. She is so much fun. She is not the probably the best champion right now. I think like AD wise, but she is still uh, pretty good. She can fit like she can do a lot of things that other champions can't do. I guess one of the biggest things is that she can actually like protect herself really really well. So like your um, your E or your W, sorry, you can jump away. Your ultimate, you can knock people away. Plus, you have just really high range anyway. So, these things are actually really good for, like, carrying a game. What makes her one of the best late game carriers. And I kind of wanted to do something a bit different. So, I've been playing a lot of lane bully champions recently. Um, we've had a few stomps <laughs> because I've been using my um, lane to get ahead and then kind of, like, snowball the game from there. I wish to do something a bit different. So, for those of you who aren't... The most aggressive players ever this video is going to be more for you where we're going to do well in lane still we're going to like still try and win our lane but we'll win it through better trading and better csing and then we're just going to have a really really solid mid game uh, and a late game as well hopefully so we're not necessarily aiming to kill everyone like 24 7 we're aiming to more like have a farming kind of lane phase and then we're going to kind of carry a bit later like that so now let's just move here and uh, move these around thank you by the way to chogath if i doubt you're ever going to watch this video but he let me go AD carry. I was actually mid this game and I asked him to um, let me play AD and he actually did. So thank you very much to him. But um, probably due to the fact we're like 6 and 1 right now in our placements, I think. Maybe 5 and 1. But I think it's 6 and 1. So we're, we're doing pretty well on this account so far. But anyway, so everything's rearranged right now. We're against a Jin and Morgana. The part of the reason I actually picked Tristan in this game um, anyway is just because he's actually pretty good. She's pretty good, sorry. Against champions like this. Like we have an Amumu on the enemy team. We have a Morgana, we have a Diana. Now all of, oh my god. Don't know if you should have prepped that for me. I think you're trying to take it actually. But yeah, all of these champions are really good at diving onto you. And so as an AD carry, that's actually kind of bad for you. Like, I don't know really what you're able to do too much. Oh, nice, man. Nice. Uh, you're not really able to do too much as like a, a normal AD carry, I guess. You need some mobility. Tristan is really good for this because the movement she can jump out of her... Um, jump out of his like ultimate the jump out of the Q as well Diane she can jump out of the the Q so he's not going to get like tagged by it not going to get the the ultimate reset which is really important for actually surviving a Diana combo and even just Morgana or Jin in lane like if these guys go really aggressive I can hopefully jump away like now where that would have actually hit me so I'm able to kind of escape and stay safe just farm up the lane phase which will be really nice I don't really want to use my E unless we're actually going to fight because as soon as I put my E onto Jin he's just going to run away and it's kind of pointless this is the one problem Tristana actually has. Well, she has two problems. One is she doesn't really have a good build. And two, she doesn't really have much of a good trade. She can kind of do some basic stuff, like autoing like that. I'm not going to punk out. I'm going to try and, you know, have some lane pressure still. But I could put my E on her and I could try and trade with her, sure. But I don't really have any way of locking her down, right? Uh, she'll just run away. So it's kind of one of the problems. The other one is this build. Tristana doesn't have a good build. Like, you can go Rage Raid. You can go Infinity Edge. Um... I don't really think she has an optimal build path to be honest and that's kind of holding her back when a lot of other carries right now actually have some really good synergy with items like Ash with the runes for example she's gonna be able to do a lot with that because of her range of focus procking in all three bolts Caitlyn for example runes is gonna uh, charge the headshots quicker now Trisana I'm actually gonna get runes on Trisana I'll talk about my build in a second but you don't actually have any special synergy uh, here to be honest at all like the reason you get the runins is because we don't really have anything else to get to like that's kind of kind of it okay so i'm actually going to point another point in my e here some people put in q but e is going to actually be more in a fight just for the base damage anyway so my build is going to be okay uh i'm going to try and actually hit all of the i'm going to miss that one uh, the one thing you don't actually before we talk about build the one thing you don't want to have is be under tower against uh, oh that's nice okay we can do some damage here don't get too cocky. Don't get too cocky because they actually have more than damage than us. So, well, I don't want to jump in because I don't think we can kill them. Uh, Morgana has ignite and she didn't use it on the thresh to start with, only at the very end. But anyway, so uh, yeah, she ex the expl oh my god, that's not good. One v two. All right, uh, the explosive charge makes it really hard because as soon as you CS one creep it damages all the others right you never want to be under tower um, as a Trisana but anyway build wise so we're gonna treat her like a Jinx or like a Kate oh my god like a Jinx or a Caitlyn we're gonna go for that a very heavy attack speed build uh, with a lot of crit damage in there and we're just gonna try and rely on her very high range and ability to stay safe so that we can just attack a lot in team fights and carry that way 
So we're going to be going for a BF Sword into a Runes Hurricane and then into uh, Infinity Edge, then a Rapid Fire. Oh, actually proc that. Okay, and now I'm going to jump in though. Might be able to get this. Proc my Q here. Oh, I actually auto Dominion twice there. Oh my god, I'm bad. Oh my god, I'm really, really bad. I actually might have been able to get her as well if I'd have managed to pick that up. I was just attack moving there and um, I attack move on the ground instead of on Jin because I'm dumb and bad. And uh, yeah, we managed to pick that up. <laughs> Oh, uh, so we, we got a kill that's good for us. Um, that was awkward, but yeah, so we're gonna do runes uh, BF sword into runes hurricane You don't ever really want to rush infinity edge because it's really not that good. You don't okay So it, it can work on certain champions, right? Um, but basically a lot of the stats you get with infinity edge while walking back crit strike chance and the damage These are both kind of useless without more crit strike anyway. We we need like an attack speed item to attack more more chance of critting anyway because we have more autos flying out. Plus it gives us crit chance anyway. So we really need like an attack speed item before Infinity Edge becomes probably worth it, I guess. Uh, so we get the BF sword just for some AD, some trading. Like AD is actually really useful early. It helps us CS more, helps us trade better. And then we go into Runin. So we have like now attack speed with a little bit of AD, which is going to help and be nice. Then we get the Infinity Edge, finish that off. We already have some crit with Runes, so we can still make use of that. And then, um, okay, this is actually risky because he wants to go for the pink, but there's this huge wave, so I can't really help very much. I'm going to try and zone a little bit, but can't do much. Yeah, and then we're going to go into Rapid Fire Cannon, most likely. Uh, this will give us some more increased range, a bit more single target damage, and loads of crit as well. So we're basically just crit machine with that build. Then uh, maybe a Last Whisper or a Bloodthirster, depending on what it is. But this is a very, very heavy auto attack crit build. That is what this build is good for. That's what we're trying to do. Um, and looks like our team's doing not amazingly this game, but that's fine. We they're doing okay, and we can definitely still carry this. So we just have to kind of survive the lane phase. Her lane's actually pretty decent. We have a lot of damage, but it's more relying on the uh, support than anything else, actually, for like how to set it up. They have to do a lot because as we said like if we just ease someone the reason i'm not using it even though i'm full mana is because if i use it on someone they're just gonna run away the, the actual correct play really would be using it on Jin a little bit because oh, i'm gonna miss the cannon oh no i'm not nice um the correct play would be using it on Jin a little oh she messed up she messed up okay oh my god okay Oh, that was really close. Um, yeah, so the correct play were, would have been to use my E on Jin a little bit and then just poke him down slowly, even if it's only one charge on it. Um, but yeah, I, I've just been kind of a bit too scared with that. Good job. Okay, so um, we managed to pick up that kill. Uh, we just went on to jumping onto the Jin after we get some charges onto our, um, our E, which is just the best way of doing it. I'm not sure. When it first came out... Um, when this first came out with the Tristana rework, if you jumped onto a champion, well, if you jumped onto a champion um, while it was active, like while you had your charges on, it actually did bonus damage. Um, I don't know if that's still the case because I haven't played Tristana in a while. I'm trying to read this now and see if it's actually doing more or not. I'm not entirely sure, but yes, you sh I, I always try and jump on the champion. Um, I should probably look that up honestly before I play Tristana, but <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that's kind of like. I had that at the back of my mind as something I'm trying to do, but jumping on for damage. Jumping on as well after she's used her bind so you don't get caught, because you can get caught mid -air. You saw I got caught under tower, which is really awkward, um, because, okay. Just, this. Uh, it was actually really awkward, because you can't jump over binds like that and stuff. Oh my god, I'm in a bit of trouble. Uh, he probably has his ultimate here, so I'm gonna go focus here, Mumu. We do have more people coming in. Okay, I tried to stand out of that because it's, it stops me attacking. It's actually pretty bad. Um, that that was actually my fault. I think I might have been able to kill that Mimi there. I'm not entirely sure, but the the ultimate that like kind of counts as a mini stun if you want to think of it like that. So you okay? Morgana is definitely going for the bind. Yeah, there we go. If he hits that, I'll jump. But I'm not going to jump if he doesn't. Yeah. Plus we have that. Yes. Uh Yeah. So it, oh my god, this is really not good. Uh, yeah, I might be dead here. No, not yet. Okay, we well, got that, which is good. I didn't have to be too afraid there, but I didn't actually see the binding coming in, which is kind of my fault there, to be honest. Like, 
100% my fault actually. Like a, what I could do now is I could flash and jump on them for the slow. I'm very tempted, but if I do that, I'm probably gonna die. So I'm just gonna. Oh my god. Okay. Need to get in here to do a bit of damage. Oh, uh, if we, I think someone's already probably gonna take that. You can spin out, mate. I'm not getting in there. Need that. Uh, so I don't have much damage right now. So this is the problem with Tristana. Is Oh, I can flash out like that. Oh my god, that was way too close. So, <laughs> the, I had to kind of flash away from her to try and survive that. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to survive that, honestly. Like, I didn't really know if I could have survived that or not, but I tried. One of the problems with Tristano at this point in the game is you don't actually have much damage. Like, you don't... You have a little bit of base damage, which is nice, I guess, but... Oh, block it, Thresh, block it. Thank you, Thresh. Oh, I hooked him! <laughs> Dude, I can't. I can't. I'm so low. If I if I go in once, I'm dead. I'm so dead if I go in once here. Uh, <laughs> he hooked him. That was actually kind of funny. Yeah, so I wasn't really too sure if I was going to get away with that or not, to be honest. Um, I thought I might actually die, but I was considering the flash. I flashed away from the Diana. It's just good to get some range so she can't use her auto attack on me. Not sure if it was necessary, but... Yeah, uh, this is, you see actually though, we don't have a ton of damage to be honest. So we have auto attacks, that's about it. Which is fine I guess, but we need items more than anything else. Items are so important on Tristana, is what, kind of the reason why she's not great right now. Um, I guess we can talk about that. Apart from not having a good build, just in general, when you're playing Trist, she doesn't bring anything that nobody else um, does. So like she's not unique really in a way. She has the peel, that's the kind of one thing I've been talking about a lot because, you know, that is a big deal. She has a lot of pill for herself. She has the high range. She's a very good late game with the attack speed started on her Q as well. But, oh, you bastard. Um, but, you know, it's not exactly... Like, a Jinx can do similar, right? I don't think this guy has... Oh, he does have all. I'm going to go in here, get the reset on that one. And then I'll jump in here. Just Okay, he actually went back for the Thresh. I thought he was going to try and escape, but I guess not. It's actually really well played by Thresh. So much for, like, that we're not going to try and kill people in lane. To be honest, this is not what Tristana really does. Uh, she's not the best in lane, but we've just managed to get a few kills because they've made a few misplays. And now we're really snowballing out of control. I'm going to stop maxing my E here as well. This is a choice you can actually make. I'm watching the minimap because I don't see Diana anywhere at the moment. Uh, she could easily be coming behind me right now, and I could be dead. Uh, to be honest, if she's coming, I'm probably dead anyway, so... Yeah, I'm just gonna keep pushing for now. Uh, I can jump. My plan will probably be she comes from behind me, so I jump over this wall and I get away that way. Uh, she's still not on the mini map, and her wave is in the middle, so she might have been top and I just missed it. That could have been true, or she's coming for me right now, but I don't know which is probably true. <laughs> true. Okay, she was just mid. AFK with your mum, and she actually is AFK. Fair enough. Yeah, so um, now we can actually try and show you guys what Tristana is really good at. But let's just get this stuff first. Um, now what we could do, to be honest, uh, I mean, I was going to say I can't be asked to do the maths, but I can do the maths. An economic grad, I should, should be able to do that, right? Uh, so Berserker's Greaves would be pretty good for a burst in power right now. Infinity Edge would be more team fight damage going down. So because we are already really fed and we don't necessarily need the boost in power because we're already quite far ahead we can skip level two boots and we can just go straight for the that was a good yeah um we can just go for the infinity edge and, and use it that way instead oh that was a good e because he i only pink watered that that's nice i'll get those kills that's good okay so we really should try and control the dragon a bit more something i've noticed like um, in all of these games that i played we haven't really got many dragons to be honest oh they're actually doing it right now I'm coming up. Okay, so the one thing I have to be afraid of is his ultimate and her bind. Dodge those things and nobody's going to be able to kill me. If I'm that close though, okay. Uh, I, I, we can still do this probably, but... Okay, that's really risky though. Oh, don't try it. Please leave me alone. Okay. I might be able to do something here if they come down and be really greedy, but we'll see. It was really hard there because if I go next to the Morgana, oh, <laughs> fucking trap, man. If I go next to the Morgana there, um, she's just got a really easy bind onto me because it's so, it travels quite fast. It's hard to dodge. And my Q, or my W, sorry, has a wind up, right? So this is actually a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. Um, 
Oh man, please. Can you... I don't know if I can actually get in there. I think he's dead anyway, to be honest. I'm just gonna let him have that. Good job. Um, so it's a good thing and a bad thing at the same time because one, you can actually get hooked by like a Blitzcrank thing as you're... If you get hooked as you're winding up your W, you'll actually still jump away. Um, because you're... Like it's, it's counting as casting as you as you get hooked so it doesn't interrupt it so it's fine but if you actually end up getting hooked like uh before you're probably dead or during so if you actually wind it up and you jump like you're actually jumping then you're still gonna get hooked and jump away uh but anyway the, the reason it's a bad thing is because it's not instant like a, a lucian dash right if lucian dashes uh, Morgana, Morgana binding. As long as he actually gets away from the particle, it's fine. As long as he presses it in time. With me, I could see it coming, and I could still get screwed by it because I'll start to jump, but it will hit me as I'm jumping, and as I, where I wherever I land, I'm going to be binded, which probably means I'm dead. So uh, that does actually doesn't really help me very much. Okay, I'm going to base and get my Infinity Edge. That actually doesn't really help me very much. So. I have to be really careful in those fights. I don't want to throw my lead either. I'm really fed. I'm worth a lot of gold. And in my experience, if um, if you die... I don't even want one of them. Not that much for a team player. <laughs> in my experience, if you're fed and then you start to die a lot, uh, your team starts to tilt because they see you as their kind of hope, I guess. Um, this game for like carrying them. And if you start to die a lot, then, you know, that's their, their hope going down the pooper a little bit. So... In general, I found a lot that if I can avoid dying, it's actually way more beneficial than just not giving gold to the enemy team. Anyway, so for now, I'm keeping an eye on where Morgana is a lot. Uh, every time I... I'm kind of keeping an eye on the minimap in general because I don't know where anyone is really. And they could all just be roaming down to try and kill me because we've lost mid-tower. We've lost control by jungle. Oh man, this is bad because it's a 3v4. And Jin can do a lot from really far away, so... That's actually not good, but Trindum is coming in. I'm coming in as well. And if I can get there in time, I can definitely do a lot of work here, but I have to be in time. Oh, they're actually going to win anyway, I think. Oh, nice flash from Trint, though. Okay, so they actually won that uh, without me, which is really good. So they don't even really need me too much, but I had to move up as soon as I started that to see that because I was like, okay, if that goes badly, then I need to be here to help them. The other thing that's really good with Triss, actually, one thing I said, okay, she doesn't really have anything unique, but she pushes towers really fast because of her... Explosive charge. So even though she doesn't particularly have anything, you know, majorly unique, I guess. It still is kind of. I'm just going to poke her a little bit because we're going to try and dive this. Okay, that's a condemn down. Now I can go in. The one... You bastard. The one thing I had to be afraid of a little bit was the... If she condemned me into a wall as I jumped or something, maybe the tower would, like, kill me. So I had to make sure that I wasn't getting uh, jumped on. Uh, condemned, sorry. That's the one thing I had to be careful of. Alright, so Amumu's used his Q. I don't have to worry about that. I have to back off the explosive charge or it's going to aggro onto me, though. Amumu, I don't know if he has his ultimate or not. I assume not because they just had a big fight. But he could still have it. I'm, I'm going to... I didn't see him use it, so I need to assume it's up anyway. Let's see if we can get a fight or anything like that. Oh, the tilt. She was blocking those earlier and now she's not. It probably means she's just a bit tilted. Oh, to be honest, I should probably jump on that Jin. Uh, that was a bit of a pussy move for me, really. So Jin is probably going to come down from the bottom side, where well, he might do. He's definitely there at the moment, and normally someone would run like here just out of cockiness or not really thinking about it too much. Oh, I actually don't want to do this though, because that all yeah, that's kind of why. Oh, that's a lot of damage. Whoa. Okay, I'm gonna flash that. I'm going to ult her away so that I don't die here and just heal myself. I'm worth a lot of gold. I don't particularly want to die. I'm trying to think in my head. Or... Son of a bitch. Uh, uh. Okay. Do I do it? Do I do it? No, I don't think I do this. I don't think I do this. She's tunneling on me so hard, which means we might be able to kill her. Right. She's just used all of her spells now. Oh, she didn't quite use all of her spells. Okay. I got baited. That's my bad. My bad. Oops. Sorry. My bad. So, I thought she'd used both of her dashes there onto the um, the Thresh, uh, trying to burst him down. So I was like, okay, she's got nothing left. She can't get onto me. She's got no gap closers left. I'm going to be fine. But actually, she still had a dash left. So in my head, I thought, okay, I'm just playing around cooldowns here. If she doesn't have a dash, then she can't kill me. But she, she did actually have a dash. So I jumped in, like, assuming she didn't have it. 
and uh, yeah, that didn't go too well. Okay, so we're gonna go for a rapid fire cannon now. We need to find a place for our pink as well at some point. And then really after that, we just want to control dragons. So let's ping this just to get people thinking about it. Um, I'm out, boys. What does that mean? Does he mean he's done so? I hope that's not what he means. Yes, yeah, so we want to get the dragon. Whenever there's like, the objective there, you don't have to necessarily ping it a million times. Just pinging it once is often enough for people to realize, you know, hey, we should actually take this. Um, Vayne's top as well with no TP or anything. She's just going for pure split push here. So if we could get something, that'd be really good. My blue trinket, by the way, you've seen I said in a previous episode. <laughs> fucking nice cute, mate. I said in a previous episode, this is like my favorite blue trinket because nobody ever takes it. She just walked over that and didn't even take it. So, yeah. Um, uh, it's so good. It's giving us so much vision right now. And it lets us do a lot uh, with that. So, that's why I always like having it. Chogas has actually gone top, which means we're 4v3 right now, which is why I backed off. Probably going to take this, to be honest. But they've already got one dragon. I kind of want to take a, take one, but Chogas... Holy... Okay, I mean, that's a nice free kill, I guess. But I have to be careful of the Diana because she could actually kill me quite easily. Uh, but she is not that close right now. I'm going to jump here. There we go. That's why I was talking about queuing up our uh, jumps here. Going in for the Jin now because he's actually taking damage from the, the dragon. If I can get a crit, that would be really nice. I'm going to jump out here so they can't. They go on to someone else. And now we can go back in again. Get that, say, reset for us. And then we'll... Whoa, she almost freaking one-shot me. Holy moly. So you see, we, we had a lot. How we already knew what we were going to do. That's what let me do things. As soon as I saw Amumi jumping in on me, I was like, okay... He's probably going to key me. I need to already key my jump so that it hits me, but I'm already jumping, so it's not going to not gonna screw me over. Like, it's, I'm already going to be in the cast time of it. These are things you just have to keep in the back of your mind. I'm not a god at all, like at this game, but I I think a lot, and because I know a lot, which you guys can, like, improve your knowledge a lot as well, so it's nothing, like, special. Um, because I know what I want to do, because I have thought about it in advance, because I've played this game so many times, and I know like what I should try and do in each situation. That's something you'll learn with experience and just watching these videos, hopefully. But that kind of stuff, you think in advance and then you can do it much easier. Like, for example, the not going near the dragon fight because of Morgana's bind and how I can't really dodge that. That's something I've no I know and I've thought about in advance. So I'm like, okay, I can't go near there. It's not a case of I go too near and she binds me and then I'm like, oh crap. It's like, I know I already can't do that because of that. And for example, like the Diana trying to one-shot me her jumping onto me, all of these things I'm thinking about in advance, which then allow me to make these plays a little bit more. So the more you think about the game, the easier it becomes because you have less to think about basically. I know it sounds really weird, but by thinking about what you want to do properly, you actually eliminate a lot of like what if factors, like what things that could go wrong and stuff like that. You eliminate all of that because you don't, oh man, she's so cool. You eliminate a lot of that because it, it's not a, you know, it's not going to be a problem. I'm actually going to just take that because pad my stats. Yeah, you eliminate a lot of the what if stuff, like a lot of the things that are irrelevant, and you only have a few things to focus on, which is what I really think is like one of the biggest things I'm trying to do with this, I guess. Like, by talking so much and about every little thing that goes through my head, I'm like, hopefully, you guys realize actually a lot of this is only relevant things. You can cut a lot of this out of actually what you probably think about and worry about anyway. So, I'm going to actually replace this with a pink ward because. Um, they haven't found that blue trinket at all so far, so I might as well. Okay, I'm going to run away here. And Mumu could just jump in. I'm keeping my camera panned up a little bit so that I can see a Mumu. If he starts running towards me and cues me, I know that I just run away, basically. So keeping my vision on where what matters most. Okay, um, that's going to be interesting. Let's get the... Oh, nice hook. Nice hook. Okay, she's probably dead, so I'm going to start attack moving upwards. Because then I can jump onto Vayne here. As long as I don't position near a wall, she can't stun me. That's the number one thing with the vein. Do never, never, ever put your back to a wall for her. Because that's how she's going to kill you. So you see how I just stayed in the middle of the lane there? And the reason I do that is so that she can't... Oh, man. Oh, she hit that. That's kind of... Oh, he hit that. Oh, rip. Okay, I'm going to go for this, though. No! Rip. He hit his Q on me as I jumped in. That was a bit greedy. <laughs> that was a bit greedy. We should have just got the tower there, but I thought I thought I could take that, to be honest. So, yeah, that was unfortunate. 
All right, so I'm actually gonna get AQSS though because they have a lot of crowd, con um, a lot of. Uh, well, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, crowd control is the right word. I'm an idiot. They have a lot. I'm trying to. I see what happens here, but yeah, that was that was kind of silly. I shouldn't have jumped in there. I kind of cost my team that fight, so my bad. Um, but yeah, they have a lot of crowd control, which I can like break. I guess a Jin root. I can get rid of the Diner Crescent. I think unless it's. It shouldn't. It should remove it. But actually, after the QSS change, I, I, I it might not. To be honest, so. What you used to be able to do if you were quick enough and good enough against the Diana is she'd hit you with her Q and as she was jumping mid air with her ultimate, you could cleanse the Q and then it wouldn't apply um, the reset on her on her ultimate. It basically like completely screw her. So this is uh, that's one of the reasons why you'd never really see her much at high elo because if someone that that's kind of why actually you you see the combo you know like where it's just Q R instantly because it leaves literally no time to do it. A lot of people used to do it the slow way though, and the reason they don't anymore is because you can actually screw the Diana with it. So, but yeah, I don't, I, I doubt it's actually probably working like that anymore. So I won't use it for her. But the Vein Condemn, I can cleanse that. I can cleanse the Amumu stuns. I can cleanse the root from Jin, root from Morgana. But this is going to be replacing my um, Bloodthirster in the build. So you only really get one lifesteal item. We should just do this to be honest. You only really get one Bloodthirst, uh, one lifesteal item. Oh, Thresh come back in a build. Uh, getting double is fine against a Thornmail, but not very good against anything else. Have to watch for the bind here, watching for the bind. The only thing that's actually going to kill me. Okay, now that's gone, I can jump in if I wanted to. The reason I didn't jump in after the immunity is because if I eat a bind to the face, I'm dead. Um, I don't really want to get cocky and die again. Oh, get a little cheeky rapid fire crit off of there. Okay, we have the tower. Just gonna clear the minions. Have to be careful because he still definitely has his ultimate. See how he's walking forward. I wasn't sure. I thought he was gonna instantly ult, which is why I um, held that QSS a little bit. He's gonna ult. There we go. Push him away so he doesn't get any follow up damage on me, though. And now we can go in for the cleanup. Focus the closest target. Always the closest target. He's gonna die, I think, from the burning stuff there we go now we can jump in for this okay the last one's already dead so no penta for us boys but that's how you play a team fight against someone like that the the, the better you can play it like the safer you can play it, the less like you are going to be to die and that was literally just the main thing was just like attacking the closest target and attack moving making sure i'm not caught in a situation where the crowd control is actually going to kill me because crowd control in itself is actually not that dangerous. Well, it kind of is, but it's, it's not that dangerous on its own. Because crowd control normally doesn't do a, lo a load of damage. The actual like threat part of it um, is the follow-up. So crowd control normally leads to something else, right? Sometimes it's not like Annie, for example. Um, Annie is crowd control plus, uh, yeah, plus like damage, I guess, but... They actually are. I'm watching the minimap right now. Okay, now there's someone else here. Well, there's only one person. I don't mind hitting them like that, but yeah. I mean, it was pretty tanky. I think I probably need some uh, a last whisper now, which I can afford, I guess. But Mercurial would also be pretty nice as well. And I don't have the inventory space because I got two components. Um, but yeah, the, 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 the crowd control isn't too bad. It's That's why you have the QSS is so that no one can follow up after the crowd control. But because I screwed up and... Um, I used my QSS a bit early, like kind of preemptively. I had to be really, really careful, which is why I knocked people away as soon as he ulted. Just because I didn't want to have him in a situation where he could ult me and then I'd have to have like everyone diving on top of me and follow up and actually kill me. But that's pretty much game I think now, to be honest, as long as we don't do anything really stupid. One thing, I guess a little thing, you should always try and have your actives on the same uh, key. So you, it becomes muscle memory so that you react and just press it. So for example, my Blathering King, my QSS is always on number two. If I have two, if I have both of them, I'm kind of in a bit of trouble, but my QSS will go to three. Having this kind of, um, having that kind of like system is actually really good because it gets you into the habit of just like instantly clicking it and just like, like instantly using the QSS or the, or the blade. You don't even have to think about it. That's the kind of situation you actually want. You don't really want to have to think about it. So always have them on the same key and try and use it. I know this kind of sounds kind of obvious, but some people just actually use it on whatever key they fancy. And that's not the, the best the best way of doing that. Okay, so we're pretty much fine now. Like, I don't think anyone can really touch us. We've been playing this game pretty safe, to be honest. We haven't ever dived in. 
Uh, we've been kind of like waiting for the right time. Just playing this very calculated rather than like brute forcing our way in with our damage. Something like, even though like we're obviously snowboarding pretty hard, I didn't really want this game to turn into a look unfed and just let me use my damage. I'm trying to be smart with it. Any aggression I have is very calculated. We can do a little bit here, but don't. Diana again could like one shot me still, so I have to be a bit careful. But I can try and go in here and take the inhib. Uh, he still has his ult though. I'm going to jump if he uses Q. There we go. That's just practice, by the way. That kind of thing um, is just lit literally practice. If he comes near me, I still have my Mercurial, so I don't mind. I'm going to activate my Q. Activating Q is something we haven't really talked about, but. I'm going to have to jump away here. I don't really want any part of this. Okay, she's used her bind, so I can go back in now. Using your Q is actually like quite important. Okay, knock her away, knock her away. Whoa, okay, I got one shot. All right, I got the in here, I guess, but that's pretty bad. I did not expect her to be able to kill me, to be honest. Let's have a look at the damage chart. 340 from the damage flourish. I didn't expect that damage, to be honest. But this was, that's actually pr quite a lot, actually, more than I thought. So that's just my fault, to be honest. I had some magic resist, so I was like, okay, I have magic resist. I don't need to be too afraid. But, um, yeah, that wasn't, that wasn't the best. But yeah, the, the Q active time is kind of important because it only lasts for five seconds and it has a 16 second cooldown. So this is a kind of like, you have five seconds of uptime, then you have to wait uh, a while before you can use it again. So you need to use it at the right time. The best time really is just when you're actually already in a fight. A lot of people use it as they open, like right at the start. But the thing is, at the start of a fight, very, very start of a fight, a lot, people will be running around a lot. Like they'll be running forward, they'll be running backwards, kind of trying to judge the fight, I guess, like engage it properly. And at that point, like you don't really have much time to auto attack, I think. You're still trying to figure out what like what is safe you're still waiting for people to use cooldown so it's actually better to wait slightly once you know for sure you're going to be attacking for those five seconds see how i never really activate it when i start to auto i always normally auto once or twice before i go in and then uh then i actually go into it then i use my cute oh my god that's not clever hey, they have a really strong like high damage team so we have to be really careful here i'm gonna try and auto a little bit just to do some damage but <gasps> that's bad Try what actually killed me? I actually don't know what killed me. I guess it was the vein damage. Oh boy, that was my bad. Where should he? Oh, Trin might be ending this anyway. I don't know. I think he has ult. He didn't ult. He didn't ult. Okay. <laughs> Unlucky. Uh, yeah, I kind of had to play it really cautiously, but I was like, okay, I think I can do it. And then I got caught. I didn't want to QSS the immediate um, the Q. That was kind of a mistake, though. I should have jumped. I didn't want to QSS the immediate Q because I was like, I want to save it for his ultimate because he's been holding it every time. But that time he just used it to finish me off as I jumped. So I'm guessing I'm going to have to use it for, my, uh, for his Q every time because he's basically just holding his ult until he has to use it. So I need to kind of adjust my play. I was thinking, I had one set of plays in mind, like how I wanted to play each time that he got me. That doesn't seem to be working for me anymore, so I need to just quickly adjust, uh, which is fine. Uh, we have Drake in a minute, but we really we should just group. If we group, um, uh, let me just say we're, we're fine. So this is um, throw potential time now because everyone's getting a lot of items. Dine is very fed at four items now. Uh, Vayne has three. Vayne obviously doesn't need items very much anyway. So we really need to be uh, grouping together now and not going in. Lee Sin is kind of thrown a little bit because he's getting very cocky. But we should still be okay. The problem is just if we get caught again like one more time, we're probably going to give them like their fourth item. And that's going to catch up with us. So yeah, we, we do need to definitely stay safe now. And take this very seriously, otherwise we could just end up getting screwed. Dino is a big problem for me because she's so tanky. I don't really know if I can actually deal with her. She's going to run away. Okay, she actually just jumped in here onto the Thresh. That was a mistake from Dino because now I can can go in here. Going to dodge out the rest of the Jin, and now I can end the game. That was a big mistake from Dino. She should have actually held that because I couldn't go in. Okay, Trin actually backdoored. <laughs> if, if Dino had held that for me, I wasn't able to auto-attack because... Her Q and ultimate outranged me, um, but because she actually went in onto the Thresh, it meant that I was able to go in. So that's just like, from her perspective, she needs a bit better threat assessment just of like who, what her actual job is. 
So we've got an S on Tristana. This is not too bad. Um, hmm. That's not too bad, I guess, actually. I'm surprised it was only an S, considering. I guess we died at the end a bit too much. But let's look at the damage done on this graph. Pretty good, but you can see Vayne did a lot of damage. Um, so did Jin, actually, considering he was quite far behind in Diana as well. So this is kind of the problem with um, with Tristana is you you have a lot of damage, I think, when you get to this late game stage, you rip through everyone. It's, it looks pretty easy, but I think the problem is if you don't get this fed, then you, you will struggle mid-game. I think that's kind of the problem. So, um, yeah, but this was a pretty good game. We played team fights well. I don't. Th I honestly think if we played team fights pretty badly, we would have lost this game, to be honest. No one else was that fed, and I think um, we still actually had to play team fights really well and carefully, otherwise the damage on their team was going to kill us. So... Hopefully that shows you at least a little bit about team fighting, but let me know what champions um, or role and stuff like that you want to see in the next episode. But thank you very much for watching. Honestly, the support so far for this series has been amazing. Like your comments and how many people watching it and stuff is is honestly really cool. So thank you very much for supporting me on this stream, uh, stream on this on this channel. I really appreciate it. But yeah, I'll, I'll catch you tomorrow.